In the past, a lot of astronauts living on the International Space Station have shared quite a lot of incredible pictures of planet Earth. And very recently, Samantha Cristoforetti, the now official commander of the International Space Station, which also makes her the first European female commander ever, has shared a really beautiful image with something somewhat mysterious in the middle. The image that we usually detect during nighttime. A spark of something really, really bright on the surface of our planet. Located in the middle of a desert. And to some extent resembling typical night lights. But in this case, it was not nighttime. It was daytime. And so I guess the question is, what exactly was this? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And so today we're going to be discussing this right here. And to be more exact, the technology that created this, because it's actually a really incredible technology. And even though I made it sound kind of mysterious, this is actually not a mystery at all. Instead, this is a marvel of engineering that to some extent can also assist us in creating a lot more green energy on the planet. So what exactly is this? Well, it's known as the Ashalim Power Station. And from the side, it would resemble something like this. A really tall tower, over 200 meters in height, with an extremely bright top. But from the top, it would resemble this. And this is of course the reason why it was visible from space. The reflection was created by approximately 50,000 computer-controlled heliostats, or essentially mirrors, that actively reflect their light and try to project it to the top of the tower, which then produces energy, quite a lot of energy, approximately 120 megawatts. And so today I wanted to briefly discuss this technology in a little bit more detail, talk a little bit more about why it was actually only popular for maybe just a few years, and why not so many people have heard about this, even though the solar panel technology is now pretty much everywhere in the world. But first, I guess, super brief history. So there's a legend of Archimedes allegedly burning an entire Roman fleet and repelling them from Syracuse by using several mirror reflections that set fire to the fleet. And this legend resulted in several experiments, including the one by French Augustine Mouchot, who used parabolic mirrors to try to produce steam using a solar steam engine. This was done in 1866. But this was more of a curiosity, and it actually took a few decades until 1913 before first appearance of a parabolic solar thermal energy station in Egypt. But it was really Professor Giovanni Francia who was the first to build concentrated solar power plant in 1968 in Italy. A plant that was able to produce approximately 1 megawatt of energy by using superheated steam that would be approximately 500 degrees Celsius, which then led to the explosion of other technology. You can learn more about his achievements in the paper in the description. And so first of all, this is obviously not the first such project, this is even not the biggest or the most powerful, but it's the one that was captured from the International Space Station. And in this particular case, this project was originally created by a company known as BrightSource that was actually one of the most active proponents of this technology in the early 2000s. And even though they actually had a lot of things going for them, and even created several major projects in the US as well, over time things kind of started to go badly for them, especially with this project known as Ivanpah, which resulted in people just complaining about this being somewhat dangerous for wildlife. And specifically the Ivanpah solar power facility that you see right here, located in Nevada, would eventually result in the demise of hundreds of birds as they would be basically fried by extreme temperatures while flying relatively close to this tower or flying through some of the light. And because of this the project was scaled down a little bit. It still actually works and still produces power, it's just not as powerful and as efficient as before. But the bigger issues for this company started happening when the solar panels started to go down in price. And so because the solar panels were now much more affordable than this particular technology that would actually take up to a billion dollars to produce per facility, eventually the company started to get into financial trouble and was then bought out by another company. But nevertheless, they jumped on the opportunity to try to create these in a lot of different countries, including Israel, including other countries in the Middle East, and even China, with the biggest such project currently being developed known as Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park, a project being developed in Dubai that already has quite a lot of solar panels operating and will also now have this tower most likely operating within the next few years, eventually creating the world's biggest solar farm. And that by itself is already quite impressive. But why is it that many of you probably never heard of this technology, and more importantly, how does it differ from actual solar panels that many of us have used? And I guess even more importantly, is this being actively developed elsewhere, or is this just a kind of a one-off? Is this technology being basically abandoned? 
Well, let's start with that last question. Let's actually discuss how this works and why it's not as actively developed as solar panels. This is known as the concentrated solar power. And as the name implies, it essentially just reflects light into a single point to create extremely hot temperatures at that particular point. Or in other words, all of the light coming into the area right here is then reflected onto a single point right at the center, creating extremely bright and extremely hot conditions, usually over 500 degrees Celsius. Although the actual shape does not have to be circular, and other types of designs exist as well. But each of the companies relies on different types of technologies. And in case of bright source, they rely on a kind of an automated way to rotate each of these individual mirrors, and there are like 50,000 of them, to try to maximize the amount of reflected light as the sun moves across the skies. But once the top of the tower is heated up, pretty much everything else follows the usual procedure. The heat here generates extremely hot steam, which, like in other power plants, then drives the turbine, which generates electricity. And so in that sense, it's actually extremely different from typical solar panel technology, where the light itself is turned into electricity through photovoltaic cells, and is more similar to a power plant such as the one using nuclear power or using fossil fuels. And because it creates high temperature and high pressure steam, and does so very effectively, here's what the top of the tower looks like in this case, over time it's able to generate huge amounts of electricity with very minimal intervention or very minimal maintenance. But why is it that we don't really hear about this more often, and more importantly, don't see it in many countries? As a matter of fact, if you look at the table right here, you'll notice that the technology seemed to have exploded in 2009, but then sort of waned and almost no new plants were produced past 2015, with Spain currently being on top and the United States being the second country using this technology, with some of the Middle Eastern countries slowly catching up. Well, the answer here is actually really simple, and it's not birds. It's the cost. Because of the amount of automation required, and because of the amount of materials needed, this is a really expensive construction, very often at least 9 times more expensive than something similar using solar panels. And because solar panels dropped in price dramatically in the last decade or so, this resulted in a major decline of the production of these concentrated solar power plants, with many startups and many smaller companies just going bankrupt or being bought out. With the total amount of energy produced around the world as of 2021 being approximately 6800 megawatts, and that's less than 2% of all of the solar power produced on the planet. Here's actually another design, this one is from San Bernardino in California. And here's a slightly smaller one from South Africa. And so is this basically a kind of a white elephant? A very expensive technology that's not particularly efficient? Well, not at all, as a matter of fact, quite the opposite. It is still expensive, at least for the time being, but in some sense it's much more efficient and also much better than a lot of other renewable technology, including wind power. And there's a really important reason for this. So unlike, for example, solar panels, which naturally require direct sun exposure and also only work during the day, the concentrated solar power plants, by design, can also produce energy at night. And they do so in a very clever way. So instead of using just a pure mixture of water to produce the steam to generate all of the energy, they actually use something similar often used in a lot of other power plants, including nuclear power plants. They essentially rely on a kind of a salt mixture, very often a mixture of 60% sodium nitrate and 40% potassium nitrate, which actually has extremely high thermal energy storage value, allowing these plants to remain really hot and produce energy even after the sunset. Or in other words, the sunlight that you see right here acts as a kind of a charger that heats up the molten salt on the inside, which then is able to stay really hot for up to 12 hours. And that also allows these plants to continuously generate electricity for many, many hours even during the night. This is actually known as the dispatchable renewable energy, which means that this technology is kind of perfect for a lot of places that already rely on a lot of solar power plants, which is why Spain is so interested in them, as are states like California. And so this is technically the most efficient way to generate energy from the solar power. But still quite expensive because of the overall building cost, and because to make it even more efficient, you really want each of those panels to be able to adjust their position in order to reflect the most light. That does require quite a lot of automation and quite a lot of moving parts. But a lot of startups and a lot of companies see this more as a temporary challenge. Once someone finds a way to build these even cheaper and improves this technology even more, 
there's a really high chance this might actually become the primary way we generate energy from the sun. Which also means that in the next few decades, as more countries try to switch to renewable energy, the astronauts in space might start seeing so many more of these blinking all over the surface even in the daytime. And that actually kind of made me wonder, if this technology is really so efficient, maybe this is another one of those potential techno signatures we can use to try to discover some kind of a potential extraterrestrial intelligence. By seeing unusual blinking phenomena on the day side of a distant planet, something that kind of resembles night lights, it obviously may suggest something out there that's trying to capture the energy from the star. Although that's quite a big speculation and there's really no evidence for any of this yet. Or maybe ever. Nevertheless, super exciting technology and something that I hope we don't abandon. Something that we might discuss in some of the future videos if there are any major advances or if someone finds a way to build these much cheaper or make them even more efficient than they are today. And so until then, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.